Hello and welcome to the 2012 California Golden Bears football preview show along with our coach Rick Neuheisel. I'm Mike Yam. Over the next 30 minutes, our Glenn Parker, he's going to have a sit down conversation with the conference's longest tenured head coach and we'll tell you everything you need to know about the Bears and their hopes of going bowling for the ninth time in the last 10 years. But there is a buzz around this program, maybe not so much uh, with regard to what's happening on the field, but more specifically about their field. Well, they got to be really excited because they're going to open Memorial Stadium again. Last year they played at ANTT Park here in San Francisco, and while a nice place to play, nothing like home. And so to be back in Memorial Stadium, be back with the new digs, lots of money poured into it. Remember, it was part of Coach Tedford's contract that that be done or he could leave without any financial obligation. So that's all behind him now. It's all brand new, and hopefully uh, so is the season. It's an exciting time for Cal. Well, I'm glad you brought up that home field advantage because that is very significant when we talk about a lot of these games. But before we take a look at what's to come this season, let's talk about some key faces that are going to be missing from this year's team. The biggest loss is 2011's Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year, Michael Kendricks, becoming just the seventh Bear to win the Player of the Year honors. Moving from outside, inside, linebacker last season, he set a career record with 107 tackles, a second Second round pick by the Eagles in this year's NFL draft. Kendricks finished ninth on the school's all time tackles list. Now, also missing from the defense will be Kendricks running mate and DJ Holt, both starting defensive ends and both starting safeties. That's five of the six leading tacklers gone from last year. The offense going to be without all conference left tackle Mitchell Schwartz, and they are supporting cast at the wide receiver spot Marvin Jones, Anthony Miller, and Michael Calvin combined for over 100 catches last year with seven touchdowns. All right, enough of the buzzkill. You want a positive, I, I have a positive for you. The biggest addition, as we mentioned before, Memorial Stadium, the Golden Bears played their home games last year at AT&T Park, while their den received an over $300 million facelift. The stadium originally opened back in 1923 with a game against, uh, yeah, not a huge shocker here, the big rivals in Stanford. But Cal fans are gonna be excited to see some of the new faces who will be playing on that field. Jeff Tedford, he brought in five standout receivers to help fill the void next to Keenan Allen. It's going to be a big question here, highlighted by Bryce Treggs, who's the son of former Cal great and Brian Treggs. A pair of freshmen could get some significant time on the offensive line. And the linebacker spot, how about Kyrie Fort, who transferred from Penn State right before camp. He's eligible immediately. Some reports, though, indicating he might not be ready for the opener as he's coming off knee surgery. But this group, they have a tough schedule, including a road game at Ohio State that the players are really actually looking forward to. Uh, we love it. Uh, anytime we can go out there and play against a big program and uh, be exciting uh, on TV and um, just go out there and get the fans what they really want to see, um, an exciting game. And um, I know they're going to love it. Uh, we're going to love it just as much as they are. Um, but as well as that, uh, just being able to play a ranked team, uh, being able to get our prestige out. Just growing up, just seeing the horseshoe on TV, ESPN every week in, week out, it's, uh, it's like kind of like a dream come true just to be able to play in that atmosphere. Uh, you hear great things, you hear stories, but uh, just being able to do it, it's just, uh, just a blessing for me, you know, just to be in that type of situation. Talk about spinning it positive. Yes. Cal could actually have the toughest schedule around with eight of their 12 games this season against teams that played in bowls last year. And that doesn't include USC, who was actually ineligible last year. The good news, they get division rivals in Stanford, Washington, and Oregon all at home. We could talk about, Coach, this tough schedule. And look, you just got to play who's there. You actually think that the tough schedule is a positive for not only the players, but also the coaching staff. I think if you're involved in this game, you're excited about big games. And there's no bigger game than going to the horseshoe and playing in Columbus, Ohio. Urban Meyer's got that team all revved up. I guarantee you Keenan Allen and company will be excited when they get to Ohio. Yeah, I think a lot of fans are, are going to have their eye on that game, but that either way is certainly a challenge. And I, I, I get the positive twist, but I know something tells me they'd rather play the Little Sisters of the Poor, right? You got to get that win? No, there are people in my industry that might want to play the Little Sisters of the Poor, <laughs> but uh, no, those players are going to be excited about playing in that horseshoe. And don't forget Nevada. Remember, two years ago they yeah. got knocked off by Colin Kaepernick and the Nevada Wolf Pack, so that's going to be a big game to start the season. Well, it doesn't matter who this Cal team plays. They're going to need some production at that wide receiver spot and a big key for this team's success. Get the ball to Keenan Allen, something they've had no trouble doing the past two seasons. In just two years, Allen is already ninth on the Bears all-time list and needs just 58 more receptions to reach uh, Jeff MacArthur's all-time record. Now, last year, 98 catches on his way to be named first-team all-conference. We asked Keenan which receivers he's actually patterned his game off of. 
uh, Chad Johnson, uh, Andre Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald, uh, big aggressive speed guys, uh, don't like to get tackled by one man, um, like to make guys miss the open field. Yeah, he, he absolutely has the drive. He is a very strong competitor. That's one of his his biggest assets is, is he competes so hard. Uh, I think with the addition of Wes Chandler, a receiver coach um, who played a lot of years in the NFL, I think he's going to take Keenan to the next level. Uh, he's going to be able to teach Keenan some things with fundamentals and techniques. And Keenan, Keenan's a sponge. He, he wants to hear it. He wants to learn. He wants to get better. And he comes to work every single day. When he comes to practice, uh, he's a very hard worker. He's very knowledgeable about the game. He wants to be prepared. And so I think he's taken this as an opportunity to get better uh, this next season. Well, last year, uh, it depends on, uh, I was watching Robert, uh, Robert Woods, uh, Marquise Wilson. Uh, if those guys play, play before me, I would see what their stats was and uh, go out there and try to compete with those guys and uh, try to do better than they did. Some interesting comments here. What do you make of a player who's actually keeping his eye on other guys in the conference to see what they do? Do you, do you like that? I think he's being honest. Yeah. <laughs> Not so many people will tell you that's yeah. what they're doing, but there's no player that doesn't keep track of it, especially somebody who's playing the same position. They want to play against the best. They want to be compared against the best, and so he's going to keep track of it. Well, look, he is one of the more talented wide receivers that we have in this conference. How difficult, though, is it going to be knowing that he's going to be a marked man for Zach Maynard to get him the football? The key for his numbers this year will be if who comes along on the other side whether it's Maurice Harris his cousin who uh, here is doing really well one of those marquee freshmen Bryce Treggs we saw his name uh, any of those guys becomes a guy that they uh, can't just roll the coverage to Keenan if they're rolling the coverage to Keenan Allen and leaving somebody open because he's not a guy they have to worry about then it'll be a tougher year for him you, know, you talk about rolling the coverage and other guys that need to step up I want to read you a comment uh, Jeff Tedford said he actually called this tight end and Richard Rogers the best tight end in the country what do you what do you make of that well he hadn't caught a pass yet yeah. but he's a 270 pound man he's a big boy and, and, and when I was playing that was the biggest guy on our team and he runs and he catches and we're gonna have to wait and see but I know this Jeff Tedford's offense is at its best when they have a marquee tight end well, there's still plenty more to come. We'll be talking about the guy whose job it is to get Allen the ball. We'll break down quarterback Zach Maynard's game, whose connection with his star receiver is not just on the football field. Welcome back to the Cal Football Preview Show. Rick Neuheisel, Mike Yam with you. And here's a look at the projected starters on offense. E.C. Sofele, uh, he rushed for over 1,300 yards, the sixth highest total in school history, and forms a potent tandem with C.J. Anderson behind an experienced offensive line. Well, the offense probably going to rely on the arm of senior quarterback and Zach Maynard, who just so happens to be the half-brother of the star receiver. Coach Tedford gave us some insight on his man under center. Zach, Zach did a great job uh, down the stretch. I, I think that was the reason why we played well down the stretch because early on uh, we had some struggles there and, and turned the football over. And I think as much as anything, learn to manage the game and not turn the football over. And uh, so as he did that through, through the end of the season, uh, this last spring was so much different than the spring before because he was brand new to our system, um, trying to figure out what was going on. So this spring we were much further ahead uh, much more efficient, much more effective, and so I'm looking to see uh, that that's going to carry on into the fall, and I'm sure it will. Well, Maynard actually threw for just under 3,000 yards last season, which was the third highest total in school history, even more than Aaron Rodgers had in either of his two seasons at Cal. Pat Barnes actually set the school record with nearly 3,500 yards in 96. As Coach Tedford mentioned, Maynard really came on strong down the stretch. QB rating over 150 over the final four regular season games, but Coach, I, it was last season. He's trying to carry momentum into this season. Is that something that can happen? Well, there's no question. Confidence carries from one season to the next. And Zach Maynard, without question, is the key to the Cal Bear season this year. He has got to be a consistent player. He obviously has to learn the system such that he isn't just looking for his brother to find a way to get a third down conversion. Uh, if he can keep from throwing it to the opponent jerseys, Cal will be a force because they've got a great running back in E.C. Sofeli who had over a thousand yards last year. When they throw the ball 29 times or less, they were four and one last season. When they throw it a bunch, they put Zach Maynard in, in harm's way and that's when the interceptions start coming and that's when things go awry for Cal. But Coach, what you're describing to me is a quarterback that manages the game. 
quarterback, as you know, it's, it's a crucial part. How confident can a team be knowing that you have a game manager as opposed to a star who can carry a load? Well, I think Jeff mentioned it. He said the last four games were the key. And, and as you grow in confidence, then you can grow in terms of how much more they give Zach. He's a lefty. He throws very well on his run. There'll be a lot of play action. Fitting in with the running game, which is a key. We talked about their tight end. The tight end down the middle of cover two when they're trying to take away the wide receivers is going to be a huge deal. Zach Maynard has got to play consistent football, and the more he plays consistent, the more times you can let him throw. All right, here's the bottom line. We've been talking about the uh, progression of Maynard after his first season at Cal, but his coach, Jeff Tedford, has actually been a mainstay on the sidelines in Berkeley. Our Glenn Parker found out how coach has actually grown over the last 10 years when he sat down with him at Pac-12 Media Day in Los Angeles. 11 seasons as head, uh, as coach, how different are you now as a coach as compared to when you became a head coach? I think you have much more to, of an appreciation for the big picture. I think when I was, when I first became a head coach, I was really focused on X's and O's and, and over the years, you, you figure out there's a lot more to it than that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a big business, uh, and uh, there's a lot of different aspects to what we do as a head coach. And so uh, really figured out that there's, there's a lot more involved than just the X's and O's. You say it's a big business, and part of that is getting the recruits in and having the right type of facilities. Now, you've had this renovation at Memorial Stadium. It, how, what does that mean to, to your program at Cal, and what does it mean to you because you've been there so long? Well, it, it makes a big difference. Uh, you know, I think uh, when you look at college football, recruiting is the lifeline of what goes on. And uh, there for a while, there's a big arms race. And, and we were definitely behind, uh, behind the curve on that. And so we've been planning this for a long, long time. And it's been a process. And it's taken 10 years to get it done. But now it's state of the art. It's, um, it's great, you know, for the student athletes to come in and be able to see something that's nice. Uh, both with the, the physical fitness and the training piece of it and the academic component and just where they come to work every day, you know, that they feel like that they have top-notch facilities and obviously it helps in recruiting because 18-year-olds are very impressionable about what they see and uh, so now we're, we're up with everyone else. Early on in your schedule, you've got uh, Ohio State and USC. Do you think you're going to have a, a, an idea of where you stand at that point? Or, or will it not matter? No, I think so. I, I think when you play two teams like that on the road, both of them are on the road, uh, that you know, there's going to be a challenge there. Obviously, they're hostile environments, and they're very good football teams. And so I think that will give you a good gauge early. You know, Going to Ohio State uh, will prepare us to go to USC. Uh, we have players on our team that are veteran players that don't get bothered by the environment. But we're also going to have some young players, and it's going to be the first time that they're in that type of atmosphere and uh, with the pressures and the, and the noise and everything that goes along with it. So um, I think it will give us a good gauge on where we are, and, uh, but that's not the end of the season. It's a long season, and uh, you know, so we'll go reach our full potential and, and uh, hopefully come out with some victories in those games. So if, so if that's a good gauge, then would you look at your home games that right early on with Stanford, Washington, and Oregon? Would you see that as a great uh, opportunity then? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice. You know, anytime you can play at home, you know, especially against those teams, um, you know, it's, it's nice to have those teams at home in front of our fans, um, you know, and, and hopefully our fans can repay the favor for when we go on the road to those environments, you know, because those are pretty hostile environments to play in as well. You have moved your practices to the mornings. Now, the Bay Area is not especially known for blistering afternoons. What was your thought process there? Well, we do that uh, to be more efficient and uh, to have the kids be able to utilize their day better. You know, so we're able to have practice finished by 10, 30, 11 o'clock every morning. And then that's more conducive to their academic success where they can get to class and, and get to their tutoring and so on and so forth. And then at night, be able to have a little bit of downtime, you know, because typically college kids don't do a great job of utilizing the hours between 7 and 10 in the morning. You know, they're typically sleeping at that time. So if we can utilize those hours to be productive with football, that gives them the rest of the day to do academics.
Uh, your team last year, you finished, I think, three of your last four you won up. How, how important is it to have that momentum moving forward, especially when you do talk about the, the renovation and all the things you're trying to build going on? How important was it to win those last, a uh, few of those last games? Well, I think it was critical to end the season strong. Um, you know, we won three of our last four, and the other one we lost came to Stanford by three points at third place, which is a very close game. And uh, so I felt like we improved over the season, and that's always important is to improve every, every game, week in and week out. And so I think we can take a lot of momentum from that, uh, but then we can take a lot of motivation because we didn't play well in the bowl game. And uh, we turned the ball over five times. And I, I think, you know, without a doubt, the key stat throughout the year on, on wins and losses is turnovers. And we turned the ball over too many times in the losses. And, uh, when we didn't turn the football over, we were successful. So I think we got a lot of, uh, built a lot of momentum uh, through the last part of the season, but then a lot of motivation by not playing well in the bowl game. You know, is, is it a little odd to be playing the big game in October? Yeah, it's very odd to be playing a big game in October. You know, uh, you know the, the traditional rivalry games, everybody looks forward to that being your last game. And I think the fans get, get – uh, juiced up for that and are ready for that. So it's going to be a little odd. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that go on in, in the week, a lot of activities, a lot of functions that, that kind of are centered around the big game and, and the traditional game, the rivalry. And uh, so I, I think it will be a little bit different, um, just a, a different feel. But um, it, it is such a big game. It is such, such a traditional game that I know the fans will, will come out and, and enjoy the game. But it's, it's just going to feel different that typically that's when the season's over. and. Now it's not. You know, we're talking about big games for this Cal team. We, we went over the schedule on how difficult it's going to be. You and I have talked off air about Coach Tedford's role with this offense. He sort of touched on it a little bit from the X's and O's standpoint. What do you think should be happening for him with the X from that stand vantage point? Well, he mentioned at the outset of his career at Cal, he was into the X's and O's and realized the head coaching job had a lot more to hats to wear. And, and certainly he's done it. He's now the dean of Pac-12 coaches. Yeah. He's been in, the, in this <laughs> league longer than anybody else. It's a little bit uh, tenuous when, you, when you're trying to stay around in this profession. But I think Jeff Tedford, to be at his best, needs to get back into the X's and O's. And I talked to him a little bit about it and said, you were at your best when you were the quarterback coach. He coached Joey Harrington at Oregon. He coached Kyle Bowler, Aaron Rodgers. Both have gone on to the NFL for long, time, long, long careers. He needs to get back in, get the Tedford offense going, get the tight end back involved in this deal, get the 1,000-yard back, which has been a mainstay of Tedford offenses over the years, and then get the consistency at the quarterback position. And that will happen if he's in that quarterback room. And I look forward to, to him doing just that. I, th I think that will be the key as Zach Maynard takes that step towards consistency. A critical year for, for Maynard, obviously, as, as a guy that's a senior and really has to limit those turnovers. Coach talked about the fact that this is a guy that did come on strong in the late half of uh, last season, so something to keep an eye on. But we still have plenty more to come. We look at the Bears' defense that's lost some firepower, but looking at some emerging talent coming through. Coach tells us how this team can maintain a high level of play with the front seven. Rick Neuheisel, Mike Yam with you, and welcome back. Here's a look at the projected front seven in Berkeley this year. Chris McCain actually looked like a playmaker his freshman campaign before an injury cut it short. Up front, the Golden Bears should be solid with the combination of Kendrick Payne and Aaron Depody at nose guard. DeAndre Coleman, he came on strong at the end of last season and is on several preseason watch lists for 2012. Jeff Tedford, well, he likes his D. I, I think we have some some defensive linemen that have played really well for us, Aaron Tapodi, uh, Kendrick Payne, DeAndre Coleman, um, Jaleel Mustafa. Uh, all those guys played last year and did an excellent job. And then both corners are coming back. And uh, so we have some experience at the corner position. Um, our safety, Josh Hill, has played a lot of games for us. He's a senior leader. So uh, I think the secondary and the defensive line is very strong. Um, we have to fill some spots at linebacker. Well, I want to ask you, Coach, about that secondary in just a bit, but break down this front seven for me because they have lost some good, good talented players, but they are still a, a few that are still intact here. Well, Cal has played great in the defensive line over the last several years. They've had a couple of first-round draft yeah. choices. Tyson uh, Alu Alu and Cameron Jordan both on to the NFL in the first round. Uh, very, very stout up front. Tapote is, is a 
space eater. They've been in an odd front under Clancy Pendergast, and so you got to have a guy that plays the point of that defense to make it successful, and Tapote's been terrific. And, and Kendrick Payne, I have a feeling they're going to find a way to get both of them on the field at the same time, along with DeAndre Coleman, a youngster from up in Seattle that is now starting to blossom. So you like that front, that Clancy likes to move those guys around, different gaps, and then allow those linebackers to run around. And Chris McCain, he is in the uh, same body type as Deion Jordan up at Oregon. This is a big rascal that comes off the edge. You better know where he is. How important is it going to be, though, to make sure that you have those playmakers on defense there, even if you're, you're keeping a couple, you're talking about some odd formations maybe that we're going to have or odd lineup choices there uh, but to get make sure you have your best players on the field knowing that there is some inexperience just like an offensive coordinator a defensive coordinator wants to get his best guys on the field and they want weapons and and Chris McCain gives a lot of diversity to that outside linebacker position because he can drop off and is real rangy and yeah. trying to knock balls down reading quarterback size but he's also a wild haired pass rusher and you better know where he is well coach Tefford actually mentioned how strong the secondary can be. Here's a look at the projected starters with Mark Anthony and Steve Williams. You have both starting corners back from last year. Josh Hill played every yeah, good, good ways and bad ways, but uh, it's always good to be versatile. Uh, I can play whatever they need me to play. I know um, last year I played majority nickel because that's what we needed. So I played corner when we need. I play safety. So I can just do whatever the team needs. Not so much about me. All right, it's pretty clear, Coach, that no matter where they line up, Josh Hill, the secondary actually has a pretty good chance of being very good. I, Coach Teffer was talking about it as well. How important is it going to be for these guys to really make a ton of plays so that this Cal team can succeed? Well, defense has been the key. Uh, Coach Tedford mentioned it. And, and you got to remember, this secondary has been the number one pass defense in the conference coming off last year. The corners are outstanding. They can play man-to-man. -man, they can play all the zones that Clancy likes to call up. The key is Josh Hill filling in for Katus last year, who was the safety, Conti the year before that. That safety position has been kind of that free uh, wheeler that keeps the track of the quarterback's eyes and find ways, finds ways to make big plays down the field. That's been the key to get that turnover margin in Cal's favor. All right, something we're going to keep an eye on. There's no question about that, but there's still plenty more to come here. Trust me, you don't want to put down the remote. You don't want to miss what's next. Coach is going to tell us which player will be the breakout player for the Bears this year, and if a bowl game is actually in the team's future, it's crystal ball time. It's coming up here on the preview show. Coach Neuheisel, Mike Yam with you, and here's a look at Cal's special teamers for this year. The freshman punter, Cole Lock, had the task of replacing Brian Anger. Anger taken in the third round of the NFL draft by Jacksonville. Actually, the highest at punter has been drafted since 95. Vince D'Amato actually replaces the dependable Giorgio Tavecchio on the field goals. Keenan Allen will get another opportunity to showcase his skills in the return game. All right, before we finish things up here, I want to ask you about this Cal team. we got four questions for a breakout player on this squad. Who is it? It's got to be Maynard. Maynard has got to deliver. And I think with Tedford in the role of the quarterback coach, along with Marcus Arroyo, who's got the title of quarterback coach, I think Maynard gets it done. Cal wants to be successful. The fans want Cal to be successful as well. What's got to happen for this team to win? Well, they've got to continue to play great defense, they can, and they've got to win the turnover battle. And that goes again to Zach Maynard. He cannot throw it to the other team. All right, what's the game that you, you're, that's on the schedule that you I have think, to see? I think we'll know a lot about Cal when they go to the Coliseum and play the Ooh. USC Trojans. Okay. They have been absolutely whipped the last three years by USC. Uh, 128 to 32 or something like that in terms of the that score. That tends to happen. I want, <laughs> they have got to play yeah. well in the Coliseum, not just for the sake of the conference record, but also for their confidence. It's going to be a tough matchup. It's actually the uh, fourth week of the season. USC, that'll be their debut on the Pac-12 network, so you're going to be Absolutely. able to watch that game right here. Uh, this team, this Cal squad, they've gone bowling nine of the last ten years. Do they have the pieces? Or is it going to be another year where we're going to see them in a bowl game? Tougher non-conference. So yeah. the, the, the non-conference finding ways to win in the non-conference will be critical because I still see them as a middle-of-the-pack team unless Maynard takes that quantum leap and becomes the, the signal caller they're all looking for him to be. We cannot wait for the start of the season. Coach, fantastic job by you as always. That's going to do it for us here. The Golden Bears, they kick off their season September 1st at the renovated Memorial Stadium against Nevada. You can see that game right here on the Pac-12 Networks. And for the latest on Cal and all the Pac-12 schools, be sure to keep it right here on the Pac-12 Networks and, of course, online at pac-12.com. I'm Mike Yam. Thanks for watching.